Will there be any comments on the longer term outlook that we haven't seen already, Carl? Well, it's going to be complicated to do that uh, since we don't have forecast updates or a press conference or any of that good stuff. Uh, that all comes in the September meeting uh, along with the rate hike as well. Uh, today, we'll just have the uh, word smithery or the, you know, the, the, the Fed watchers. Uh, the, they'll be in full gear uh, trying to uh, decipher some changes in tone from the statement. So I don't know that they'll really use that platform to make signals about long-term policy. Uh, nonetheless, the uh, the, the message from the statement will uh, reiterate what we heard from Jay Powell's semi-annual testimony before Congress uh, back in July, uh, and that is that the Fed is firmly entrenched in this gradualist approach to normalization. Part of that will be signaling that inflation is only getting close to the Fed's target, not necessarily that we should uh, declare mission accomplished and uh, open the champagne. Also, uh, there may be a, a little bit of language that uh, suggests that GDP number we saw for Q2, 4.1% growth, uh, is not the new normal for the economy. Rather, that was the perfect storm of uh, economic events, uh, and we should expect some moderation in the back half of the year. All of that will keep the optionality for the Fed uh, to uh, hike or pause at the December meeting. September's a done deal. They want December to remain a question mark until much later this year. There was a lot of chatter about the new words for now. Does that get put into the statement? Uh, I, I think that they can use that language of uh, closer to target. Uh, so, so maybe not the words for now per se, but that uh, implied message I think will, will be evident in the tone. Carl, I mean, as yet, we're waiting to see any impact from trade tensions that certainly have their impact on a day like today in the markets. But do, when do we expect to hear about the decision on a fourth rate hike or not? Does it all have to be played out in the data as to whether traders hit? I think it has to be played out in the uh, the data, to be sure, uh, but also in financial conditions. So the flatness of the yield curve, uh, whether uh, the, the chart you highlighted uh, from uh, Gina Martin Adams about uh, equity market uh, momentum. Uh, if equity markets are uh, wobbling, the yield curve's flat, or the dollar's uh, ripping higher in the back half of the year, uh, all of that uh, tightening of financial conditions uh, could lead the Fed to pause in December. I don't think they have to make this decision uh, until uh, early in Q4, and that could mean even that they wait to see the uh, results of the midterm elections, which would be uh, early in November, uh, before they make their final commitment for that December uh, decision. Uh, talk me through the ADP numbers that happened today, Carl, though, because they hint that actually, when you're looking at the manufacturing jobs, we might talk up concerns, but actually still there's no impact of the trade tensions even there. Ex exactly. So the, uh, the, the price tag of the tariff measures taken to date uh, really do not move the needle on uh, overall economic growth. So yes, uh, it's a negative factor, but it's a relatively small negative factor in an economy that's growing at a robust pace and is further supported by uh, fiscal uh, tailwinds uh, due to the tax reforms at the start of the year. Uh, as we've been looking into the economic data in what I'll call the soft metrics or the sentiment-esque metrics. So we see that definitely trade war concerns are an elevated concern. They're at the forefront. They're definitely on folks' radar screens. Uh, when we look at the hard economic data, we're not seeing a material pullback just yet. Uh, certainly, we didn't see it in last month's jobs report, and uh, we'll be focused on that uh, very uh, closely uh, in this Friday's uh, report. Manufacturing employment would be one place to look, as you highlight. Uh, also, the diffusion index of uh, job creation, which measures the breadth of job gains, uh, would be an early canary in the coal mine, uh, showing that uh, we're having some uh, negative downdrafts from the trade concerns. We didn't see it uh, in the June data, and I suspect we will not see much impact in the uh, July numbers as well. We had a big sell-off in Japan overnight, JGBs. That plus the announcement out of the Treasury this morning on refunding pushed the 10-year yield above 3% plus a few block trades. Does it stay there, Carl, for the moment? Uh, well, I think if we see uh, robust job gains on Friday, my team is above uh, consensus on the call. I know consensus was about uh, 185. We're closer to 220. Uh, if we know those types of job gains are coming down the pike and we're not seeing a material drag from trade war concerns, then folks are going to have confidence that 
faster growth and a bit more inflation will uh, will persist and that should support uh, treasury yields add into the mix uh, the fact that uh, we uh, have uh, increased borrowing uh, costs and maybe even more if they adjust uh, uh, some of the uh, taxes for uh, inflation uh, so more borrowing higher yields are here to stay